Hi, I'm Kim Davenport. Welcome to the Straight Pool Podcast. We're here uh, at Pat Fleming's International Open, and we have uh, Reed Pierce, my partner in crime here, uh, U.S. Open champion, and Joey Tate, uh -huh. JIC, Junior International Championships. And uh, glad to have you, young man. Thank you, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Joey. We got Joey Tate here, man. Uh, one of the great young I've watched you play, Joey, uh, some. Uh, what I've seen, man, you're unbelievable. You got all the tools to be a great player. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, where you're from, yeah. and how old you are. Yeah, so I'm 17 right now. Um, how I started, my dad was in the business, in the industry uh, of pool, and he started when I was about like five years old, uh, taking old tables and re making refurbishing them, making them look new and then reselling them on the internet and um so we he refurbished one and put one in the house and so or actually in the basement and so i just started playing on that and soon enough like when i was turned eight he started taking me to these five dollar tournaments and like week week on the weekends and so from that then i went to um the junior nationals when i was 11 and played in that and then i kind of just figured out that i could play this game at a high level and that uh, I was given the ability to do that, so yeah. Let me ask you a question. Uh, growing up, uh, and you're from uh, North Carolina, correct? That's where you've lived for a while. Yeah. Did you have any, uh, I, I don't want to call them heroes, but uh, people that you looked up to, you know, uh, pool players, some of the champions of your time, uh, did you have anybody teach you, or how did, how did that go for you? Yeah, so, so growing up, um, my dad taught me the basics. Uh -huh. So I looked up to him in that respect. So for a while, he, you know, I, we would play races, and I'd go to four, he'd go to seven, you know, well, that's things a like that. Good young man, let's be yeah. father. <laughs> <laughs> right. But then once he taught me the basics, I kind of was on my own from that mm -hmm. point. You know, he would show me a, right. a few different shots, but in terms of mechanics and like, you know, uh, on that side of things, I was I learned from different people, you know. And um, but I mean, when I was younger, I would say Skyler Woodward was a guy that uh, I, I liked to watch as he because. When I was starting to play, he was like just entering the the pro um, the pro field, and he was doing really well. Sure, hoping you would say Kim Davenport, but <laughs> I, 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 you probably never even heard of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but and then also, well, in that time, uh, he came up to North Carolina. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. for a for the Doug Beasley uh, Open, uh -huh. and there was a doubles event, and we out of random draw, got picked together to play on, on a team against everybody else. This is, it was like a junior pro tournament. And um, me and him got picked, and, and we ended up winning the tournament. And so it was, it was fun to hang out with him and, yeah, that, and get to That know. had to be a thrill. And there's, there's a, a really great player that was out of North Carolina named Michael Col Coltrane back in our days. And uh, do, have you heard of Michael? Or? Yeah, no? yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So he, he, had, uh, he had an arm issue, and he had to kind of retire. But... Uh, he, he was a great player out of North Carolina, too. He was, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen him at a tournament not too long ago. Um, he seems like a really nice guy. The train, Michael Coltrane. Uh, let me ask you this, Joey. Uh, I noticed the tables in here and all. Tell us, do you have a table at home, uh, or do you go to the pool room? What pool room do you want to plug, maybe, or possibly? But a couple, I want to ask you that question. I want to come back to another subject. But do you have a table? These exact tables that you practiced on, or you, or do you? What do you do? Yeah, yeah. So right now, living in North Carolina, where I'm at, Wilson is a very small town, about 15. No, no, I'm sorry. Elm City is right next to Wilson, but we live in Elm City, and Elm City is a town of like 1,500 people. So there's like nothing there, a few businesses. But uh, my dad has a business in town, and I have a table in the back room that's a diamond blue label, uh, like four and a quarter inch pockets like standard um and i play on that all the time but uh let's see so go ahead what? so it, they're basically the same table that you're playing on in here yeah. same cloth everything blue cloth yep. yeah okay let me ask you this uh what stick uh what cue do you play with i mean yeah. uh what type cue is it a wooden is it an old wood fashion is it carbon fiber what is it no it's a carbon fiber shaft it's the rogue peach hour rogue carbon fiber shaft that peach hour Custom yeah. Cues makes, who I'm sponsored by, and right. they're a great company. Yeah, yeah. a long time. Yep, play with their yeah. stuff. So let me ask you another question. Uh, the tournament's going on. Mm -hmm. What uh, What's going on with you in the tournament, and then uh, yeah, what happened? 
Yeah, so in the Open, I won my first match against Greg Hogue, and then I had to play against Abdullah Al Yusuf, who's a great player uh, from Kuwait, uh, wow. and he took me out 10 5. I had a chance to make it 8 6 with me breaking to make it 8 7, but I. I missed an eight ball that was kind of it was a weird shot because I had to I had to play tedious like shape for the nine, and so it, I hit it thick and missed it, um, and then it kind of w went away from there. But uh, my next match was against um, what was his name Sullivan Clark. That's right, yeah, Sullivan Clark. He played a great game. Um, I lost ten seven. I made a few mistakes in that one too, but um, yeah, he went on to take top thirty two. Great player. But um, now in the junior event, I lost my first match. And kind of the way I was playing kind of from in the open kind of carried on to my first match and didn't play too well. And so I lost that one. But you have to learn to take some bruises sometimes and bandage them up and just act like it don't happen. You know? I always found like when I was playing uh, in competition uh, on the Pro Beards Tour that you just never want to make two mistakes in a row. If you make a mistake, just it's got to go away. And because yeah. if you make two mistakes in a row, it can be hard to uh, to overcome, yeah. but I tell you what, it's been great talking to you, and you're a fine young gentleman. I'll tell you what, you're just a great fine young gentleman. Can you I want ask you? Yeah, I want to ask we'll him. Right I want to ask him one more thing, a couple more things actually. One is you don't have to elaborate too much about it, but about the formats of the uh, race into four, two sets, race to four, and then you have a shoot off. Just give me a quick. What do you think about that? What is your opinion? Do you like it or not? Yes. Uh, so. I, I do enjoy it. I think it makes it that every game is so important um, and you have to play really well each and every set. You can't, it makes it more even for amateurs to play in it that they could beat a better player because it's, once it's one set apiece, you know, then it's a shootout. Yeah, and it's a lot of pressure you have on that to, one shot. You, you can't just go into that tournament and do like crazy good. You have to actually have some experience with the shootout, like dealing with the pressure and stuff. But I think it's great for TV. Um, yeah. As I think as long as they keep the, the payouts and grow the payouts, then players are not going to stop coming to them because that's where, you know, you can make a living doing it. They have, they have like top 16, you get like 10,000. Like that's great, you know, and I think they're getting close to that too. So um, that's what we need for pool. One more question. Um, I'll add, I'll add. How do you feel about the Moscone Cup? I know there's been people that uh, I see on social media. Uh, there's been people that's been, uh, you know, wanting you to be on the Moscone Cup team this year. I know you're a young man. Uh, how do you feel about it, first of all? Or do you think you would be up for that if uh, Jeremy chose you? Uh, uh, would you want to? Would you relish the fact of being on, taking on that pressure of being on uh, the, the Moscone Cup with yeah. Team America? So I'm flattered that people would even put my name up there, you know. But I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it a little bit too. Uh, and I'm flattered by that. But on the other side, like, I think the most pressure is going to be on the last pick for the United States because they just made a post that it was four weeks away. And once you get picked, then you have four weeks to prepare for the, bi the biggest event of your life. And that's a lot of pressure. Now, if I got picked, I would 100% accept it. But, sure. but I think that. Um, I, I know that there's other people right now that deserve it more than I do. So I'm going to take that and just try and work on uh, this next year that's coming up for all the events going on. I'm going to really try and hit it hard with a lot of the pro events. Yeah. Well, hey, man, Joey, you're an awesome young Thank man. You. Uh, you look like you got all the talent in the world. It's an honor to be able to uh, interview you, in, you here with the Pro Beers Tour and send it back to Kim. Joey, um, I'll you. tell you what, and you're, you will play on a lot of Moscone Cups. I have a, I have a feeling about that. And I'll tell you what, folks, we're going to wind it up here for the Pro Billiards Tour. U.S. Open champion Reed Pierce, Joey Tate. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye.